Glory to Jesus. Uh, remain seated. We're going to open up our Bibles in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. From verse 4 to 9. Glory to God. Amen. Who doesn't have the Bible? It will be here in the production. Deuteronomy 6, from verse 4 to 9, says the following. Firstly, I would like to call here to the front our brethren, Clayberton Silva, our sister Evelyn Silva, and our little sister Olivia Silva. We're going to do an action, prophetic action, a biblical act, which is to the presentation of Olivia. You can stay here. You can stay here at the bottom. This is the word of the Lord to Israel. And today we are a spiritual Israel. So this word, it's, word, it's, it's okay for each one of us, especially for the parents. Hear, O oh, oh Israel. Hear, Cleverton. Hear, Evelyn. The Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which you I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your home, in your house, when you walk in by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as front list be between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This word the Lord has given to Moses, in order for Moses to relate to the people, because the Lord has a great concern with the family. The initial project of the father was with family. And also the children, the heirs, the fruit of the family. And we know that the soul has no age. For the moment in which Olivia was uh, generated, a soul was born. For the moment, uh, Evelyn brought to us the news of the pregnancy. The church began to pray for her. Pray for the couple. Pray for the birth of Olivia. And the Lord had, has laid his hands. The Lord has operated. The Lord once again has demonstrated being faithful to the prayers of the church and also to the prayers of the parents. No one knows who prays here, prayed here. No one knows. But God knows. God knows each prayer that was made during the gestation of Olivia throughout this period. And now, more than ever, it is a moment for us to praise the Lord. And this responsibility here of the Lord has been given to the people. The couple is also taking on before the church to lead Oliva to have an experience with the Lord, to guide Oliva on the path of the Lord, and to sit down with Olivia while they lay down and waking up 
and getting up and leaving to take time to spend with Oliva to speak of the things of the Lord. That's the purpose of the Lord, because this is the inheritance, inheritance that we have that needs to be generated on the heart of Olivia, because she has a soul, and this soul wants to go back to heaven. In the same way that we want to go to heaven, because we desire, she also desires. And we as a church, we are going to help them, giving good testimonies, being good citizens, good parents, being good uh, brethren in Christ. This is uh, our role as a church, so that she sees in us that we are also no creatures in God. And the parents are also going to give a good testimony of what is the Word of God. And in all this, Oliva will be, will be raised not only physically, not only on her intellect, but in her spiritual life. She will be prepared also by the Holy Spirit in order to meet Jesus. Amen. So here's the word for the parents. This is our word for the church, our commitment that we have to be praying for this family. Once who have already prayed to this moment, they don't know, but God knows that you will have to remain praying. Lord, bless Olivia. That's her growth, what she's going to learn, so that she may have knowledge. She be, may be able to choose the things of the Lord in the first place. And this may be a priority for her to serve you. Amen? Are you ready? Are you willing? We're willing. Amen? So I'd like to invite the church to stand up. Earlier. Well, he's here, you know. Who is this weird guy? <laughs> well, let me fix up her dress so she can take a picture. So let us pray. Lord, we plead for the power as in the blood of Jesus. We place, Lord, in your altar the little life of Olivia. We glorify your name, Lord, because we know that everything was placed before your author. And we glorify the Lord for the operation of the Holy Spirit, for the blessings received, and because to this day you have helped us. And we glorify Lord for the birth, for her birth, for the life of the mother and the father, for the life of the servants, Lord, that uh, are willing to guide her on your path. We ask that you may teach them to serve you and so that they have uh, uh, incredible experiences in, in her life and that you may protect her from evil and from infirmities and from everything that the world may place on her path but that she may be able to choose you, choose you in the first place we uh, give her into your care we pray in the name of Jesus Amen she behaved very well Amen. Oh, uh, leave the microphone behind. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. You can sit down. Glory right to Jesus. Uh, the, the church will remain standing. The church will remain standing. Now, Pastor Sabado, please. We thank you for the presentation of this child. We save your prayer, adoration, and our midst. In the name of Jesus, amen. Since you're already standing, I'm going to open up the Word of God. Peace of the Lord to everyone. In Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. First verse. Amen. Here it is. 
sometimes the children need a little help, so if the women can come and help, afterwards, afterwards the ones who want to participate and, and open up the Bible and follow the reading of, of the Word of God. Very well. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the following. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good things to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Lord, we thank you for you because you have already done tonight and I also ask you that in your word may bless your people, uh, your church in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated.
Hallelujah. We sang a song that said the following, Come and forgive and restore. Bring your grace show to show us. Every time that we call the name of the Lord, He makes Himself present in our midst. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The text that we just read speaks of the proclamation of salvation. <coughs> Proclaim is to make it public. It is a public declaration. It is a solemn um, as a extraordinary ceremony is is official. It's made by the government. And in this case, the government of the of God, a theocratic government, by the King of Kings, by the Lord of Lords. Because before salvation was restricted to a family, to a people, to a nation. And when Jesus he comes. He turned this salvation into a great salvation in encompassing to all the tongues, nations, and tribes. And why does he do this? Because his father loved the world in such a way that sent him so that whoever believes in him may not perish, may not die, but have eternal life. And Jesus himself says the following, in the same way that the serpent was risen on the desert, it's important that the Son of Man may be risen, and I will attract everyone. So it was the desire of the Lord to attract everyone, or to bring every man to his presence, into his presence. And that's why in the chapter 61 of Isaiah, it begins like this, that this salvation was proclaimed. We are here in an official ceremony of God to proclaim this so great salvation. Because in the same way that it was fulfilled in the life of Israel, the desire of the Lord is that it may be fulfilled in us in our midst, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because this text here, being Jesus in the city of Nazareth, he entered on the Sabbath on a temple. And the people, the scribes, the doctors of the law, gave him exactly this verse. And when he finished reading this verse, the Bible says that their, all their eyes were gazing at him because they all understood that the, the verses referred to Jesus because Jesus was the one and he told everyone who were, who were there he makes a public declaration he says today is being fulfilled in your ears this prophecy and the desire of the Lord is that today it's fulfilled this prophecy in our midst to our ears. And my brethren, the Bible says the following. Jesus had already received the witness of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet, prophet born of a woman. When Jesus passed by, he pointed out, he is the Lamb of God who takes the sin away from the world. But Jesus doesn't need a witness from men. So then he goes there and testifies of himself. That's what he said. Today is being fulfilled in our midst, this prophecy, because this prophet speaks of me. And we are here tonight to speak of the Lord, of our Savior, the author and finisher of our salvation, of our faith, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he says the following, the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon me. And I ask you to the church, you who visit us, upon who is the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah? Upon is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the only one who has the Spirit of God. 
And why does he have the Spirit of God? Because God chose him. And the Bible speaks of this. Because the Lord anointed me. So Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed of God. He is the one who is sent by God. The Savior of the world. He is the Messiah. He is the life. The, he is the word. He is the water of life. He is the life of the world. He is the light of the world. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the Shepherd of Israel. He is the Shepherd of this church. He is the truth. He is the path. He is the resurrection. And He is present in this place tonight. The Spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon Jesus and anointed Him. And you know why he was anointed, my brother and sister? To preach. To proclaim. To announce. To spread. To man that there is salvation. That there is for man a path. That there is for man a new heaven, a new earth. There is an, an eternity prepared for, for man. We need to preach about the good news. Good news is uh, good information. When Jesus was born, the angel went to speak to the shepherds. I proclaim to you good news because, my brethren, bad news we hear it every day. On the newspaper, the media is always there. You might see that there was a man. I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say his name. He is known as bad news. This man is, is known as bad news. Whenever he arrived, there was only misery. And today, what we hear all the time is bad news. And the news is so bad, it's not even on the dictionary. But Jesus is coming here to bring us good news. My brother and sister, you who are here tonight in this place, there is good news from God to your life. My brother, the wage of sin is death. But Jesus came to bring good news, the gift of God, His eternal life in, in Christ Jesus, in Him. My time was counted towards death, but I was willing to the, for the, by the Father to allow me to have access to eternity. This is the good news, that we are not going to die, but we will live forever in the presence of the Lord. He came to preach about good news. It's interesting that the Lord speaks about four, four types of people. I believe in this place there are four types of people, four characteristics. The first person, that the Lord came to preach good news to, is to the poor. To preach good tidings to the poor. What is to be poor? I used to be poor. And in Matthew, on the preaching of the mountain, the Lord said to the poor, uh, uh, the inheritors of the earth, there are going to be the errors of the earth. So the first message for the errors of the earth, the new land, the new earth, in eternity, the poor are the ones who every day are making themselves are making themselves available to hear and to obey the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The ones that are submissive to God, the ones who act in a righteous way, the ones that control their emotions, they are not rude and or aggressive. There's a verse in the Bible, my brother, that says the following. May not be confused by me, because of me, those who wait on me, on you, O Lord, Lord of the hosts. May not be confused because of me, those who seek the Lord of Israel. This is a poor one, because on his witness, it, his witness does not cause confusion or problems, and does not put obstacles so that all that may may come into the presence of God. The poor is the one who learned with Jesus. Learn from me. 
because I'm poor and humble of heart. So the first word of the Lord is for the one who are who is humble of heart, the ones who who have learned with the Lord, the ones who know the path and walk on the path of the Lord, that do not go astray to the left or to the right, the ones who are humble, the ones who are free from the vengeance, from the bitterness, from the hatred, for the anger. They don't have those things in their lives. The ones who are going to inherit the earth. They are going to inherit the eternity of God. The Lord is speaking with you, my brother and sister, tonight. The Lord also speaks, saying that the Lord was sent to restore the contrite of heart. Salvation is exactly this, is restoration and turn everything anew. It is to give the same appearance that it had previously. It speaks of children that from whom is the kingdom of God. Because So when we grow, we lose the kingdom. We no longer have the appearance that the Lord has given us when we were born, when we were in His presence. But when Jesus comes, He restores. He turns man into a new creature. He is born again. And this restoration in Jesus, that's the restoration that Jesus came to promote. He started the contract of heart. The ones who are contrite of heart. And there's a person in the Bible that speaks of this. The sacrifice to, for God are the ones who are, have a broken heart and contrite heart. The Lord will not despise the sacrifice. Uh, so uh, those who understood the sacrifice, the contrite of heart, is the one who that has repented of their sins. Is the one who, when he looks to the cross, he's thankful for what God has done for his life, for his rescue, for his restoration, for his salvation. And the Lord, the Bible says that we what we have to offer to the Lord is exactly our heart. Give to me your heart. So we see this, the broken-hearted, the one, my brethren, that can feel the pain of the other, the misery of the other, the suffering of his neighbor, the one who cry. Christ with the ones who were crying. And Jesus, when he went to the house of Martha and Mary, the Bible says that he was moved and he cried. Faced with that situation, he was the one who are broken hearted, the man who, was, who is, has repented, the man who seeks forgiveness, the prodigious son. He was broken hearted. He has sinned, but he has repented, he confessed. I sinned against the Father and before you. And he not only recognized his sin, but he went back to ask forgiveness to his Father. And the one who are broken hearted. The, one, the ones who want to have a new life. The ones who want to make a change in their life. The, the broken heart. The one who seek the Lord. The know their situation, their misery. The situation in which they are. And Jesus came exactly to those, to the poor and also to the brokenhearted. Remember, the Lord also speaks to those who, uh, also to proclaim liberty to the captives. There's a song that uh, uh, Lopez uh, says in, the, in Brazil, where the lyric says, when I was in captivity, you brought me to Zion, and the priest, it was like dying. I was walking in sadness, the strong people of God. So what was the freedom to the captive was the people that left their own land. I'm not. I'm talking about Brazil here, because our land is eternal. In eternity, the kingdom of God. The ones who were in the kingdom of God, but were taken captive. They were taken away from the nation. They were brought to far away from God. 
But the Lord is saying tonight that He wants to deliver the ones who are captive. He wants to restore and bring back. Today is a day for us to go back into the presence of God, into our true nation, to our to our God. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives. And my brethren, the word says that if the Son deliver you, you should be who will be truly free. So tonight, tonight, the deliverance tonight, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the Jesus is present. Because He's the one who has the Spirit of God. He is the anointing for you, for mine, for our lives. He came to rescue me. He came to give a letter of freedom, a document of freedom, give, bring freedom to the slave. He came to give freedom to the slave, to man, from his captivity. Many times we are held in captivity. We are distant from the product of God for our lives. So Jesus came for this, to take men out of captivity, to bring men and give an opportunity for men to go back into a presence. The Lord also speaks, my brethren, about that he, he came to and opening of the prison to those who are bound, the ones who are bound, who are, who are, who are tied without freedom, they are prevented from going away. Many times we are like this, we are tied up, we are bound, there is a difficulty, a problem, an adversity. And many times we are imprisoned because we are imprisoned. And sin imprisons man. That's why Jesus says that when whoever he frees is truly free. If a man is not freed, it, it remains tied up. And there is a song that says, when I was on the world, I was slave, I was bound to sin. And Jesus came to, to do this, to break the shackles of sin, to free man up. Because when you are bound, many times you want to go away. But you can't because you are bound. You don't have the key. But the word says, my brother, because this, the one who was the son of God, he has a key. And it opens up and nobody can close it again. That's the name of the Lord. The Lord is here, open up the prisons, from actions and attitudes that do not glorify the Lord. There's a verse in the Bible. It speaks of a woman. This woman was for 18 years imprisoned by the devil. It is written there. You can read it. That's how it was written. Luke, Luke 3, 16. She had a spirit of infirmity. It was not a, an infirmity. It was a spirit of infirmity. And for 18 years she suffered with that spirit of infirmity. That's evil spirit of on her back and to allow and uh, cause her to walk curved and in no way she could straighten herself up the enemy of our souls does that to men he places an evil spirit on the life of man so that man cannot straighten up man wants to straighten up his life he wants to walk lo looking towards heaven but he can't you know why? Because he is being imprisoned by the enemy of our souls. And the only one who can deliver men from the enemy is our Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ. And he did this to that woman. Woman, you are freed from this prison. Why? Because at that moment, it was a, uh, day, that was a day of deliverance to that woman. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And my brethren, Jesus there's a text on the Bible that says to man is impossible. Jesus himself says that. But to God, nothing, everything is possible. So this Jesus, this salvation that he's here proclaimed, the spirit of Jehovah that is upon Jesus 
that came to proclaim, to bring freedom, to open up doors, to manifest His power and His grace and His favor and His mercy. He is the one to operate also the impossible. Because for God, nothing is impossible. And when Jesus was there, is being fulfilled in our midst. This revelation, this scripture, this prophecy, and people saw in Israel, they saw. So Bartimaeus came, he said, what do you want me to do? And, and he said, see. So ten leopard came and Jesus cleaned up all ten. As a man, the, the well of Bethesda, what do you want? You want to be healed? You want to be made well? And the man didn't even answer what he wanted. But Jesus said, oh, okay. Still, I'm going to heal him. Pick up your bed and walk. There was a great crowd in need. And this, with the necessity of blessing. And they were three days without eating. There was a young man who had five pieces of bread and two fish. And the Lord fed a crowd of 5,000 people. And not to leave any doubt, he went there again. And once again, a crowd hungry and multiplied for the second time the bread and fish. The first time, they, there was a lot over 12 baskets and now more baskets were left over. This is the, the blessing we're proclaiming here tonight. Because Jesus is the anointed. He's the one who has authority. He's the one who has all power. And Jesus, when he taught, he taught with authority. So he manifests his authority through his word. And he says the following, my brethren, to me is given all the power in heaven and on earth. So this Jesus that is being proclaimed here tonight for so great salvation, he has all the power over heaven and over earth. He's the almighty God. He is the God of the impossible. He's the Lord of, of hosts. He's, that's his name. The people was there. The, his disciples were in the boat with Jesus. The storm came, the strong wind. The crowd went there and spoke with Jesus, save us. Don't allow us to perish. And Jesus said, shut up. <laughs> Be quiet. And there was a great uh, calm in the ocean. And people asked Jesus, who is this who can speak with the wind and, and the sea? And the sand? sea obeyed them. This is our Lord Jesus, Jesus, whole Lord of Israel. He is our Savior. In Psalm 46, I like it so much. It says that nations went anger, but he raised his voice and the land melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, church. The Lord of Jacob is our refuge and our strength. My brother and sister, every time the Lord raises his voice, the land melts down. Every time the Lord raises his voice, every affliction, anguish, pain, suffering, infirmity, difficulty is reproached because the Lord uh, and Savior has power and authority and all the power and authority was given to him. And so, brother, as he operated in the past, he operated in Israel, he operated in Jude Judea, he operated in Capernaum, he operated in Nazareth. He is present now because he is powerful. Helen.
the church will stand up. The Lord has shown a youth and spoken to himself that he doesn't believe. There's a verse in the Bible that says that if you believe, you see the glory of God. And the argument that he has used with himself is that the place where he lives, the environment with his family members, has led him to understand to an understanding that God doesn't exist, that God has no power to operate, or that God is unable to know the secrets of our hearts. But the Lord is speaking to you tonight that there is a project from God to your life. And Jesus came exactly for this purpose, to take from man all the incredulity, all the barrier that prevent him from serving the Lord. And there's a verse in the Bible, my friend, that said the following, looking toward Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, this faith that you have deposited today in your life, you will see the glory of God be manifested in your home, in your house, in the midst of your family members. If you believe, you will be saved, you and your household. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for, for the fellowship that we have with the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, uh, that in this period of prayer or praises we may have come to your kingdom as a sweet uh, smell take us home in peace under your protection pray in the name of jesus in your name we say the wonderful grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god our good and eternal father the sweet and tender consolation of the holy spirit be with the people of god now and forevermore amen amen the church may be seated our service has come to its end we're going to, we want to thank you, men and women, who came here tonight. You are very welcome to this place. Come back other times. We have services every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thursday, we have a prayer service at 8 o'clock. Saturday at 6 on the afternoon, we have a meeting with the women. And 7.30, we have another service of glorification of the Lord. On Sunday, we have two services. In the morning, we have, at 10.30, we have Sunday school. And at night, well, at 7.30, I have a service of glorification to the Lord. You, my, my brother and sister, we are invited to come here again and also to bring your neighbors, your family members. If you desire prayer for your life regarding the word, a clarification, raise your hand. We're going to give you the proper assistance. Thank you.